In the Episcopal order of worship, the priest sometimes introduces the Lord's Prayer with the words, Now as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say. The word bold is worth thinking about. We do well not to pray the prayer lightly. It takes guts to pray it at all. We can pray it in the unthinking and perfunctory way we usually do only by disregarding what we are saying. Thy will be done is what we are saying. That's the climax of the first half of the prayer. We're asking God to be God. We're asking God to do not what we want, but what God wants. We're asking God to make manifest the holiness that is now mostly hidden, to set free in all its terrible splendor the devastating power that is now mostly under restraint. Thy kingdom come on earth is what we're saying. And if that were suddenly to happen, what then? What would stand and what would fall? Who would be welcomed in and who would be thrown the hell out? Which, if any, of our most precious visions of what God is and what human beings are would prove to be more or less on the mark and which would turn out to be phony as $3 bills? Boldness indeed. To speak those words is to invite the tiger out of the cage, to unleash a power that makes atomic power look like a warm breeze. You need to be bold in another way to speak the second half. Give us, forgive us, don't test us, deliver us. If it takes guts to face the omnipotence that is God's, it takes perhaps no less to face the impotence that is ours. We can do nothing without God. We can have nothing without God. Without God, we are nothing. It is only the words, our Father, that makes the prayer bearable. If God is indeed something like a father, then, as something like children, maybe we can risk approaching him anyway.